Good evening, everyone. My name is Suzanne Hume. I am the Educational Director and Founder of CleanersForKids.org. Tonight, we have our special guest from Students Demand Action, and I'll start by introducing Alicia. Hi, I am Alicia with CleanersForKids.org, NAACP Youth Council, and Students Demand Action. At CleanersForKids.org, we have six teams. Team one is Renewable Energy and Climate Action Plan. Team two is protecting wildlife and public land. Team three is protect protecting clean air. Team four is protecting water. Team five is stopping pesticides and toxic chemicals. Team six is zero waste. And racial, social, climate, and environmental justice are vital to everything we do. Tonight, we are hosting youth from Students in Man Action. I would like to introduce Khalil, the president of Students in Man Action, and Elijah with Students in Man Action and Cleaner for Kids. Hello. Hello, could you please let people know about Students Demand Action? Thank you, Elijah. Students Demand Action is a nationwide gun violence prevention organization. We work to pass bills to provide safe gun stories and better background checks to keep guns out of the wrong hands. We are dedicated to protecting kids, communities, and victims of domestic abuse from gun violence. Thank you, Khalil, for your work as the president of the NSDC Students Demand Action. Can you please tell us about yourself and why you got involved in Students Demand Action? Thank you. The reason why I joined Students Demand Action is that coming from New Orleans and growing up in the environment at a young age and seeing my friends lose their lives was just sad to see all of that. I would have never thought that I would have to grow through all that at this or that it would end like that. After all, we were just kids and seeing them lose their lives to gun violence is something terrible and serious. I know that I must work for positive changes. I wanted to talk to you about Students Demand Action because it's our time to make a change. We have to stand up and fight for what we want. And if we want a better future for our brothers and sisters, and we have to start making changes now. I care about our future with Student Demand Action. We can make a lot of things happen. I believe we can do it. We all have the materials and information. We just have to get our representatives and leaders to hear our voices and get them to notice us. And we can do that by writing letters. Can you please tell us about safe storage? Sure. Safe storage is when you have a safe or locked firearm safely put away from children and others. This is important. Unfortunately, Americans are twice as likely to be accidentally shot by a caller than by a terrorist. We keep guns out of the wrong hands. Thank you, Kilo. Could you please tell us about the state of California gun storage laws and the city of San Diego? Yes, thank you. California has the strictest gun storage laws. When children are in the home, some cities have stronger gun storage laws than others, for example, in San Diego, Carlsbad, Encinitas, Del Mar, and Salona Beach. California have a law that anyone storing a gun in their home or garage must keep it secure. And even if there are no children in the home, not all cities have this requirement. Can you please tell us about the background check laws in California? Yes, California also requires background checks, but not all states have these requirements. So we need federal laws at the federal level to help us pass background check bills, HR 8 and HR 14 6 6. We will give more details about these laws later in the presentation. Thank you. What is happening with school districts in California? In 2019, the California Department of Education sent a letter to all of the superintendents asking that schools contact parents and guardians to let them know the laws in California regarding the safe storage of firearms. Some of the school districts that sent letters were San Diego Unified, Los Angeles Unified, Santa Barbara Unified, and Hermosa Beach. We are asking all school, uh, school districts to send out a letter reminding parents of the safe storage laws in California. We will put examples in the chat and you can check out cleanearthforkids.org for information. Students in Action has been working with all groups across the country to stop gun violence. Can you please give us a website? If you go to the website, everytop.org, you can find resources and free online services for survivors through a partnership between Every Town Survivor Network and BetterShip Help. BetterHelp gives survivors the ability to get support from counselors by video, phone, text, and chat. Can you please compare the U.S. gun death rate to other countries? 
We need to take action now. Too many people are dying because of gun violence. Did you know that in the U.S., the U gun death rate is almost 100 times higher than the United Kingdom? And the U.S. death rate is eight times higher than Canada and significantly higher than Norway, Japan, China, and Singapore. Alicia, can you please tell us about gun violence in low-income countries? Thank you, Elijah. Yes. Good news is that gun violence is rare in many low-income countries, su such as Tajikistan and Gambia. Sadly, the U.S. is rated the 32nd highest rate of gun deaths in the world, and the gun death rates are lower than countries that are war-torn or have unstable governments with famine or shortages of food and drug wars. This is very sad. Each child that is, lo that is lost is a tragedy. Every year, an estimate of 7,957 children and teens are shot in the U.S. Like Khalil said, an American is twice as likely to be shot by a toddler than a terrorist. We must get these guns or other weapons out of the hands of kids before they hurt themselves or someone else. While universal background checks are vital, they are not enough to decrease the uncommonly high gun death rates in the U.S. as, uncompa as compared with well-off or wealthy countries. I will post this link in the chat that contains the statistics of the daily or annual gun violence in America. It has impacts of children, teens, and people of all ages. Thank you, Alicia and Kilo. Hello. In the U.S., how many lives are lost because of guns? Sadly, 61% of the loss of life from guns in the U.S. is from suicide and 35% from homicide. This has to stop. We need to... We need background checks and safer gun stories. I hope you will join us in writing letters or emails or messages on Twitter. You can write to your United States Senate and your representative school board members and community leaders. We must pass laws for safe gun stories and background checks. To keep people safe, let's take action. What are actions you recommend? You can write to your representatives to ask them to work to pass safe storage and background check laws. I recommend writing letters, emails, and calling your representatives and school board members posting actions on social media. We will begin sending letters tomorrow and keep sending them. We are putting a dir directory of email addresses in the chat now. Congressman Levin was just speaking about the need to do more to address gun violence. I am proud to be a part of Students Demand Action to reduce gun violence and to put guns in safer. Okay. <laughs> it's because I'm smiling. It's because I'm smiling and I'm distracting you. Should I move my head over? It's fine. harder because I'm smiling and I'm going, good job. It's because I'm smiling. You can like delete me or not look at me. I just don't think you're doing such a good job. Okay, all right, you're fabulous. Okay. I got it, I got it. I am proud to be a part of Students Demand Action to reduce gun violence and keep guns out of the wrong hands and make communities safe. Also to work to pass legislative bills for a safe gun storage. I know that some people think we are trying to make their guns and they're, I said make, oh my goodness. <laughs> Actually, you know what, Khalil? I just thought of this. Later, maybe we can have like a blooper thing, you know, like down the road. Because people, when we meet, <laughs> yeah, yeah, blooper reel sometimes because different people we had stuff, I'm sure, from you know, from other people, right? That have oh, through yeah. different times and they're like, oh gosh, okay, all right. Um, I will mute myself whenever you're ready, okay. I am a proud to be a part of Students Demand Action to reduce gun violence and to keep guns out of the wrong hands and make communities safe. Also work to pass legislative bills for safe storage for firearms. I know that some people think that we are trying to take their guns away or their second amendment rights, but that is not what we are trying to do. We are trying to make a safer environment and control gun violence. We are working, trying to make common sense law to keep people safe. People like you and your families, because people's lives are important. And there, here is Anna to share a petition. 
Yes, thank you, Suzanne, and thank you, Khalil, for sharing. Um, so I'd like to now talk about an action that you can take, which is to ask the Senate to pass background checks to prevent gun violence. So approximately 40,000 Americans lose their lives to gun violence yearly. Uh, the House passed H.R. 8, um, which is Bipartisan Background Checks Act, and H.R. 1446, um, Enhanced Background Checks Act. And um, after the 1993 Brady background check system, gun homicide rates and gun-related crimes dropped almost in half. So um, if you'd like to participate by signing this petition to pass background checks to prevent violence or to prevent gun violence, um, I think this would be um, a really good step in um, the right direction. So yes, I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, we need a safe, we need safe storage for guns. I would like to share the letter I wrote. We are hoping you will send letters to your representatives, school board members and others to support safe storage for guns. Um, Ariana will put email addresses into the chat as, my read, as I read my letter. Um, dear representative, my name is Alicia and I'm 13 years old. I'm still young, but I've learned a lot through the period of time I've been on this earth. Gun violence has taken many people from their close friends and loved ones. Please pass safe storage gun laws. As a kid myself, I can be very curious at times. I know other kids are very curious as well, although sometimes curiosity can be dangerous, especially for kids whose parents are gun owners. It can be dangerous for kids if they find their parents' guns not safely stored. This is why it is important to make safe storage a law. This law will pre prevent accidental deaths and suicides of children. More than half of all gun or owners store at least one gun they own unsafely, meaning without any locks or other safe storage measures. About 380,000 guns are stolen from gun, gun owners in the U.S. each year. Many of those guns are then sold illegally or used in violent crimes. Unsecured guns in the home pose a dangerous risk to children who may find and use them against themselves or others. Household guns are a big source of weapons used by youth in violence against themselves or other people. Between 70 and 90% of guns that are used in youth suicides, accidental shootings among children, school shootings by shooters under the age of 18 are taken from the homes or the homes of relatives or friends. Every year, more than 600 children, 17 and under, die from suicide with gun. There is no current federal standards for locking devices for, or, for guns or safely storage of guns. Here is Ariana. I agree, Alicia. Um, that is disappointing. It is tragic that we recently just had two mass shootings in March. And as Alicia said, if you can please write, we can pass the bills and make changes. And now here is Elijah. Thank you, Ariana. Hello again. My name is Elijah and I'm 13 years old. I'm a member of the Student Demand Action NSDC, NAACP Youth Council and Clean Their for Kids organizations. Working to prevent gun violence is important to me because kids can find guns in unsafe places and that can cause tragedy. And what is worth more than the precious life of a child? It is not fair to families to have to deal with a loss of their child. That child could have accomplished great things in their lives. It's like putting out a spark that could have become a fire. And now I'll share my letter. Students demand, action. Students demand Action is a youth group that helps prevent gun violence. The Safe Storage of Firearms Ordinance is very important. If parents and guardians don't have a safe place for their gun at home, their children can be injured or killed. Guns can become dangerous in the wrong, dangerous weapons in the wrong person's hand. A simple lock can prevent a tragedy of gun violence. The action can also help prevent things like school shootings for several suicides. Guns are causes of death. Studies have shown the success rate for suicides with guns are much higher than other methods are. This means most people that attempt suicides with guns are more likely to die than survive. The fact that something so small, so small could cause so much damage is frightening. Parents keep their guns safely locked away. Parents who keep their guns safely locked away will help make the world a better place. If parents don't take action now, many of our loved ones can die. And that's the end of my letter. Thank you. And now I would pass it on to Ariana to share her. Yes, thank you. Um, so here's my letter for the Board of Trustees, which is the school board. 
I am asking them to send out information about safe storage of firearms, and I can also use most of this letter to send to my senators in the United States, send it to ask them to pass safe storage laws for firearms. And here is my letter. So, um, dear board of trustees, hello, my name is Ariana Davis. I am a 19 year old medical student living in Vista, California. I'm involved in an organization known as Students Demand Action, which is an organization that raises awareness as well as takes action on the gun violence that occurs in society today. The organization has members involved that have all been impacted by gun violence in some form. We are here to prevent that. I am writing this letter to ask you to please inform parents of the importance of the safe storage of firearms. Due to COVID-19, the majority of people are asked to be inside at this time. This means that more children will have, act, will have access to unsecured firearms in their household due to the fact that 43% of the U.S. has adults that live in households with firearms. There are also 4.6 million youth in America that live in households with unsecured firearms, and it is important that the conversation is held about the responsibility of owning a firearm. Uh, locks on safes are a great way to prevent a deadly weapon from falling into youth's hands. Children are not aware of how to use firearms, nor do they have the right mindset at times under certain critical circumstances. Keeping your firearm safe and away from the youth in the household can prevent suicide and accidental death. In society today, there are also a lot of school shootings going on and, safe practice, and practicing safe firearm storage can also prevent an individual that has mental health issues that may act out in a violent way, such as school shooting. Um, it is very important that as adults, you are aware and practice safe firearm storage, especially at these critical times. According to research, when storing your firearm, it is important to have your firearms locked, unloaded, separate from ammunition, and inaccessible to children. Thank you for your consideration, Ariana Davis. Again, Student Demand Action website is everytown.org. Um, Alicia, would you like to talk about the background checks? Yes, thank you, Ariana. Please help us pass bills that would improve background checks because of our current laws for background checks are incomplete. Background checks are important and will prevent death. We need US, our US senators to pass a law to have better background checks. Background checks are the foundation of any effective effort to reduce gun violence and keep guns out of the wrong hands. Since federal law began requiring these background checks in 1994, over 3.5 million sales to prohibit purchasers have been blocked. And this is really great news. Now we, mu we must update the federal and state laws to require background checks on all gun sales. Did you know that one out of every five guns are bought without a background check, that has to stop. This is a common sense way to keep guns out of the wrong hands and keep our kids and communities safe. Thank you, Alicia. Um, the problem with the current laws for background checks are incomplete and flawed. Um, in fact, a 2017 study by Harvard and Northeastern Universities found that one in five American gun owners got their firearm without a background check. To fix this problem, there are two bills that need to be passed in the Senate right now that will require a background check before the selling of any gun to anyone. Um, we need to pass both of these bills. Ariana, could you please tell us about HR8? Yes, um, so the first bill that must be passed is called HR8 and it requires background checks for all sellers of guns. HR8 is also called the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021. Did you know that if you buy a gun from a private person instead of a business, then there is no background check required? I can say that again. Did you know that if you buy a gun from a private person instead of a business, then there is no background check required? So HR 8 would fix this and we must make a change in demand backgrounds for all people buying guns in the US. Thank you, Ariana. Could you please talk about HR 1446? Yes, thank you. Um, the second bill for a background check that must be passed is HR 1446. The bill is important because it extends the three day waiting period that we currently have. This means that no gun in the US would be able to be sold until a background check is completed. This makes sure the person trying to buy a gun is not dangerous and the person is really who they say they are. The HR 1446 is also called the Enhanced Background Checks Act of 2021. Thank you, Ariana. Is there support for background checks? 
Yes, um, Alicia, we have support for background checks. Did you know that 93% of American voters support requiring background checks on all gun sales, including 89% of Republicans and 89% of gun owners? Which states require background checks? Um, so 13 states, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, um, Virginia, and Washington. And the District of Columbia require universal background checks for all gun sales from a gun dealer or a private seller. And California has a 10 day waiting period. When you buy a gun in California, you have to wait 10 days before they give it to you. During this time, they will run a background check. It is called a cooling off period. And California cur currently requires all guns to be secured if a child is in the home. The cities of San, of San Diego, Carlsbad, Del Mar and Encinitas all pass ordinances requiring guns to be secured in the home even if a child doesn't live there. Can you please tell us about what President Biden has said about gun control? Yes, thank you. Um, President Biden has supported gun safety measures since he was a senator and helped pass the Brady background check law. That was the first federal background check law in the U.S. Although this law was incomplete, it saved many lives and paved the way for us to pass these new bills today. In fact, President Biden wrote on Twitter, I helped pass the Brady background check bill as a senator, and I'm committed to continuing that work and passing common sense gun safety reforms as president. Now we will go to Alicia. Thank you, Ariana. Background checks are really important. It is great that both HR 8 and HR 1446 passed the House of Representatives, but these two bills have not yet been heard in the Senate. So we need to write letters to our senators asking them to please pass these two bills for background checks. And here is Ariana for some upcoming events. Thank you, Alicia. Um, I would like to share some student demand action events and we can put this in the chat. So um, Student Demand Actions National Gun Violence Survivors Week Virtual Summit. So the National Summit um, feature guest speech speakers to share their experiences and provide students with an opportunity to take collective action to honor and amplify voice survivor voices. And then there's a leadership academy. It implements proposals that reduce gun violence in our community. It develops a community of gun sense advocates who will revolutionize, revolu, revolu, revolutionize local politics and culture, excuse me. Um, advocacy day, there's voter registration, the student demand action has an online voter registration tool. Um, Gun Sense University is an annual training summit in August of more than 2000 moms demand action and student demand action volunteers and gun survivor and survivors of gun violence to include bringing together gun violence prevention movement leaders from every state to share their best practices um, participate in training sessions about effective organizing organizing and prepare for the crucial work. Ariana, could you please thank the Moms Demand Action volunteers? We would like to thank our Moms Demand Action volunteers within the state of California, um, Karen Brennan, SDA, DMA liaison, Nikki McFadick, MDA group leaders, um, Stephanie Wells, California State, MDA, SDA group leader. And we also would like to say thank you to cleanearthforkids.org for their dedicated partnership in providing a platform for us to live, work, and thrive in a, play, in a safe and clean environment and hosting Students Demand Action tonight. Um, this recording will be available on the cleanearthforkids.org YouTube channel, and you can find the link on the cleanearthforkids.org. And thank you to Ms. Debbie. You're amazing. And Ms. Debbie would like to say something. I'm just going to speak from the heart. I am so proud of what the youth are doing to get today in all of the organizations involved here, the Student Demand Action, the Clean Earth for Kids, and the NAACP Youth. For all of you to come together on, on one, in one accord to make a difference in our future, in the present and in our future, gun laws need to be passed and you are the voices, you have a big voice and we hear you and we want others to hear you. Uh, there was something written down for me to say, but I'm speaking from the heart. 
And I, I love you guys. I'm so, so proud of you guys for leading the way for us so that we can make a difference and we can save lives. Uh, again, I just want to um, agree and echo out that we need safe gun laws. We need background checks and we need to keep our youth and our families alive. There's too many um, violent acts that has occurred from um, guns so we, uh, and weapons. So we do need to support what your youth are doing and um, this will make us a better community and a better nation. So once again, I am so, so proud of you guys. Thank you all and thank you, Miss Susan and Clean Earth for Kids for putting on such an amazing platform for the voices of the youth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys are so awesome and I'm so happy to be working with you and I'm really very excited as well to um, work more closely with Moms Demand Action. We have seen Moms Demand Action show up for NAACP um, at events and other times and um, you know, as a part of the NAACP Youth Council and the um, NAACP uh, Climate and Environmental uh, Committee, um, we are, you know, so proud to, to work together. So thank you again so much. And yes, Miss Debbie, you're awesome. So thank you. <laughs> All of you guys are amazing. So, okay. So um, thank you again. There's so much important thing, so many important things to say. I know that Jonah um, is um, still at work um, and he's been involved in Students Demand Action, um, you know, when he was in high school, he's at one of our college interns now, um, and he got involved after the shooting at Parkland. And so if he has a chance to hop on um, when he, you know, he's hurrying from work, but um, we'll hear from him later. But in the meantime, um, so I would like to turn this over uh, to Judith. And Judith, again, um, you know, we didn't have our normal intro at the beginning, but just to say, so Judith works on all teams as an artist. She's so talented. We're working on books and we invite you guys to work with us. Um, Alicia and Eliza are, write, are writing things uh, in and they've got their great stories and, and stuff. It's going to be so fun. Uh, anyway, but so hats off to all of you guys. So Judith works um, with all the teams, mostly team two and three. So um, I will introduce uh, Judith. And then she can talk with you about uh, lead ammunition. So thank you. All right, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, so to start off with the fact, um, did you know that the Department of Interior stopped the phase out or ending of lead ammunition and fishing tackle on national wildlife refuges? Um, this happened in 2017. Um, if you didn't know, fishing tackle um, as in any equipment used for fishing, such as like hooks, nets, et cetera. Um, so spent lead ammunition is dangerous. It causes lead poisoning in 130 species of birds and animals. Did you know that an estimated 16 million birds are poisoned by lead every year in the US? Um, there have been nearly 500 scientific papers that document the dangers to wildlife from this lead exposure. In order to save the lives of thousands of birds and other wildlife, um, prevent hunters and their families from being exposed to toxic lead and protect our water, we need to switch to non-toxic am ammunition. It is sad that the first actions by Secretary, Secretary Zink, who fancies himself as a champion of hunters and anglers, leads to poisoning of game and waterfowl, as in um, ducks and geese, um, that are eaten by those same hunting families. Um, top scientists, doctors, and public health experts from around the country have long called for a ban on lead hunting ammunition. They've cited the overwhelming scientific evidence of the toxic dangers posed to people and animal and um, wildlife. A national poll found that 57% of Americans support requiring the use of non-toxic bullets for hunting. The phase out or ending of lead ammunition is nothing new. Um, waterfowl um, hunters have successfully been using affordable non-toxic shot for more than 25 years. Um, Anna, can you please share these three links in the chat? Um, this first link um, gives more information about the phase 
out of lead ammunition or bullets. Um, this um, second link and third link talks about the ban in California of hunting with lead ammunition. Okay. Um, so moving on, the fact that California will be the first state to ban all lead ammunition for hunting is amazing news. Um, Non-lead ammunition is, um, you can find them um, at gun and sporting goods stores. Um, hunters will be able to choose from more than 55 manufacturers certify, certified to sell lead-free ammunition in California. Lead ammunition is still allowed for target shooting at shooting, range, shooting ranges. At least 15 other states have some restrictions on lead ammunition, but California's statewide ban on lead ammunition for hunting is the most sweeping in U.S. territory. The ban in the final step in the six-year process to phase out lead ammo after the passage of Assembly Bill 7, 711 in um, 2013. Um, I believe that's it. Our Who's next, Suzanne? Yeah, so Anna's going to talk about protecting what you love. Okay. Um, but I would like to say thank you. And also, um, you know, this is just really important. We've got to get the lead out. You know, lead, like you said, is a neurotoxin. And then also, um, just to clarify, when Judith was talking about um, someone appointed that was under the Trump administration, and we're so happy that under the Biden um, administration, we have had um, you know, we it's a completely different administration uh, with people put in there for the most part um, that we strongly support, um, including the new Department of Interior, right? Deb Halland, um, the first Native American um, woman to lead the, it was the third, the first woman to lead the Interior Department, but the third Native American um, in the EPA. So, so excited about that. So yeah, thank you so much. Judith, you said it perfectly. I just wanted to clarify for everyone that that person um, is no longer, that you had said earlier, is no longer uh, you know, going to be making these decisions. So um, things are looking up. And many of us don't hunt and would never hunt. So, um, you know, uh, or have a gun in their home, et cetera. So I know that we've been talking about, you know, please store your gun safely, but as a person who will never have a gun, gun in her home, um, I just wanted to say that um, there's a large number of people that, um, you know, would not have guns or, or um, you know, don't do any hunting. So, okay, so I would like to, thank you, Judith. Uh, I would like to introduce Anna. Thank you, Suzanne. And thank you to Students to Moon Action um, for teaching us um, so many important um, facts and actions that we can take. Um, so now I'll be talking about Protect What You Love, which is um, a contest that you can participate in by sending us your picture or drawing of what you love and why we should protect it. Let's work together to protect our forests, national parks, and wildlife, clean water, clean air, oceans, rivers, streams, and our health. You can take a picture or draw or write about your favorite animal or place and why we should protect it. And we look very um, much forward to getting some um, drawings and pictures in. And so next, I'm going to be talking about flame retardants on furniture. And research has shown that chemicals used as flame retardants can migrate out of furniture into air and dust and actually end up in people's bodies. Exposure to the chemicals have been associated with cancer, thy thyroid disease, decreased fertility, lower IQ, and other harmful health effects. Um, a new study showed that when people replaced their old couch with a new one um, that has no added flame retardants, levels of the harmful chemicals in the household um, dust dropped significantly. And so um, as a result, replacing the foam inside the couch cushions um, is, oh, sorry, um, but replacing the foam inside the couch cushions is also um, just as effective as replacing your old couch. Um, choosing healthier furniture without flame retardants can make a big difference in human health. Um, and also California updated TB 117, which was a flammability standard, um, to a new standard called TB 117-2013. Um, the new standard is designed to stop smoldering fires in the furniture's fabric before they reach the flammable foam inside. 
eliminating the need to add flame retardants to the foam. It went into effect in 2014 and allows manufacturers to make furniture without flame retardants. And in the beginning of June 25, under a new federal bill recently signed into law, all upholstered furniture imported or sold in the U.S. will have to calif or will have to comply with California's TB 117 uh, 2013 flammability standard for upholstered furniture. So yes, thank you um, for listening to that little bit of research. And next, I'd like to introduce John Williams, who's going to talk a little bit about PFAs. Hi, everyone. Um, so PFAs are uh, both referring to perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Um, so these are often also referred to as uh, forever chemicals, uh, which are a family of potentially thousands of synthetic chemicals that are extremely persistent in the environment and in our bodies. So if you've heard of um, asbestos, one of the reasons why it's so harmful is because it just stays in your body. And that's sort of like PFAs, they do the same thing. Um, so yeah, and some examples of PFAs uh, are PFOs, PFOAs, and uh, Gen X. So if you hear any of these substances, you should know that they're all referring to um, these per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Uh, and according to the Environmental Advocacy Group, uh, Environmental Working Group, more than 1,500 drinking water systems that serve nearly 110 million Americans may be contaminated with these chemicals, which is really scary. That's like one third of all Americans, like. You know, chances are, I don't know how many people, if there are 22 people in the Zoom right now, you know, who, who knows how many um, of our water systems are contaminated. So this is a really big problem that we need to, um, we need to solve. Uh, one way to do it yourself is uh, whenever possible, avoid products containing or manufactured using PFAs. So uh, these include many products that are stain resistant, waterproof or non-stick. So if you ever see any of these labels, like something stain resistant or it's waterproof or non-stick, you should really check out further this product because um, you know a lot of these things which say they're convenience like you know the flame retardants are actually quite toxic and because there's they're new chemicals um, you know they haven't really been stood the test of time like at first when you saw that something was waterproof and when they manufactured that that was a good look but now we're actually realizing that those are very harmful um, so yeah that's one thing to look out for and also um, yeah that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Uh, so now here's uh, Darren to talk about PACFA. Thank you. So I'd like to talk a little bit about PACFA. So pesticides are being used in like people's yards or playgrounds, parks next to sidewalks and agricultural crops. And they can have serious health effects to gardeners, farm workers, children, teachers, basically all of us. And so we, are pushing to stop dangerous pesticides used at schools and parks and on our fields. And one of the reasons why this is dangerous is because pesticides can drift through the air and get into our water and food supply. And this will eventually get into our systems, which can cause damage. So PACTFA is Protect America's Children from Toxic Pesticides Act. And this was introduced by a the federal level by former Senator Tom Udall in New Mexico, who introduced PACPA protecting America's children from toxic pesticides. And one quote I'd like to make from Pan senior scientist Margaret Reeves is that they state that the science is crystal clear that these chemicals are putting our health, environment, and food supply at risk, and that we must help farmers move away from them. Uh, this bill puts science and public health and on farm on on farms resilience over corporate profits and its passage is urgently needed and would finally put us on the right track. So what this quote is basically saying is that PACPA is here to put people before pesticides to create a future in which we don't have pesticides to harm people's health. And going back to like the topic of gun control, um, there's a book called Can Gun Control Work by James B. Jacobs. Uh, this was done in like he wrote it in 2002, which is quite a while ago, but he describes the complexity and the issues about gun control and gun violence. As you noted from earlier, we know that gun violence is a problem in America due to the recent shootings and other forms of violence. And this problem is controversial in the US because for some people, it makes them feel protected and secure. And they feel like it's a, an in, individual right 
under the Constitution. However, for others, it brings about fear due to the recent shootings. Um, that's why we, we suggest having safe gun storage so that children will, this will prevent children from accessing it. And I think one thing I'd like to add to the discussion about gun control is to talk about how problems of gun control may not be solely due to gun regulation. Uh, I think another problem may lie within mental health and culture in the US as noted from the book. And so I think one thing to be wary about is to encourage people to take care of their mental and emotional states, which can also help address problems with gun violence. Thank you, Darren. Thank you so much. That, that, that's so important. Um, thank you so much. So um, I, here at Cleaners for Kids, we work really hard to protect, um, protect public health, children's health, clean air, clean water. Um, your lives are so important. We want you to have a wonderful future uh, full of happiness and health, and um, we'll do all that we can to make that happen. Uh, it was really great to hear about um, the good work in progress in the state of California. And when Anna was sharing about the, um, the, you know, the laws that are being passed in California, you know, we have to, we have to pat ourselves on the back here um, with our work with um, OEHA, the Office of Environmental Health Hazards Assessment, and um, you know, all of them, California Department of Pesticide Regulation, Coastal Commission, um, because of the letters that you write, because of the letters that we write, right? So, right, right. Um, so I'm just so, um, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed with thinking about, I'm so overwhelmed with happiness and joy, thinking about uh, how you are working for the future and making these important changes. California is a leader and um, your work now you know, makes such, such a big difference. So thank you again so much for, for all that you do and thank you uh, for being here. Anna, um, we've talked about divestment uh, a lot. Uh, we have information on our website, cleaningsforkids.org, about divesting from fossil fuels. And um, we know that there's still a real big problem with some of our big banks. Can you share this information and uh, a petition so people can help? Yes, thank you, Suzanne. So next, um, I'll bring up the petition of asking to tell um, America's largest banks to stop funding fossil fuels. So air pollution from burning fossil fuels ends the lives of one in five people globally. The four largest banks in the US, which are JP Morgan Chase, uh, City, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America fund over 25% of fossil fuels. Banks have put in approximately $3.8 trillion into fossil fuels since the Paris Agreement. And so um, if you'd like to participate in making sure that um, we can stop the funding of fossil fuels, um, please um, sign this petition. Um, that would be much, much appreciated. So I'll um, go ahead and put that in the chat. And next, I'd like to um, introduce Liana. Thank you, Anna. And another um, good action that you can take is to ask uh, Congress to support the American Jobs Plan. So eventually, um, sorry, <clears throat> what essentially this plan does is it invests $2 trillion over 10 years in really important things like US infrastructure and green energy. So this means that um, more uh, clean energy generation and storage will um, happen. Uh, things like 100% carbon-free power by 2035. Um, and it also includes creating more um, accessibility to things like clean water, because that's clean water is not accessible everywhere. Um, so and making sure that we prioritize that clean water infrastructure to make sure everyone has clean drinking water, uh, modernizing public schools, making sure that they're as safe as possible for children to come back to, um, especially things like early learning centers where you have toddlers and smaller children. Um, we want to make sure that the walls are sturdy and that there's no, no thing bad. Um, and even like things like community colleges are really important because we're educating the youth. And so um, even though we are one of like the wealthiest countries on the planet, uh, infrastructure is not our best, um, it's, it's not our thing. It's, we aren't the best at it. And so uh, asking Congress to support this plan will help us improve our infrastructure and quality of life for many, um, many people. So I will put that in the chat and Another action you can take um, is something um, revolving around the thing, this thing called the Thrive Agenda Resolution. 
So thrive means to transform, heal, and renew by investing in a vibrant economy. So this will create about 16 million jobs to help build a clean, healthy, and just economy. So what clean and healthy and just means is, you know, making sure that um, it's it's going to be fair for people and it's going to promote uh, more clean things, more um, clean energy and just health overall public health. And it's already supported by 250 leading unions, um, racial justice, cl climate groups, and more, and about 100 members of Congress. So I will also put more information in the petition for that in the chat right now. And um, I also just want to say that at Clean for Kids, we do have um, six teams and social, racial, climate, and environmental justice are a part of what we do. So things that include that are really vital to that we um, it's vital that we support this and we share it with you guys so that we can take more action on it. Um, and there's a little bit more um, about uh, action plans and how action plans can list uh, things like setting 100% renewable energy goals and climate action plans, um, planting trees and so much more. And we have these action plans on our website at cleanforkids.org on the homepage. Um, and it's important to you know, learn more about what an action plan is and hopefully trying to get some in your community. So I'll put all that information in the chat and here's Judith. I believe I'm gonna talk about um, community service, right? Okay. So at cleanearthforkids.org, we welcome students during community service by taking notes, creating infographics, art, music, um, poetry, et cetera. Um, and we just talk about what you learned. So more information is on cleanearthforkids.org. Um, and you're also welcome to um, go on our YouTube channel called cleanearthforkids.org. And um, we also welcome college students or adults to fill out an applica application to, to intern or volunteer with us. So thank you. Now here is John Williams to talk about another community service idea with Project Drawdown. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, so Project Drawdown uh, is basically a research journal that has influenced university curricula, climate, city climate plans, communities by businesses, or sorry, commitments by businesses, community action, philanthropic strategy, and more. Um, it basically outlines and uh, highlights new um, climate, like plant, like uh, ways to combat global warming that um, you know may not have been previously fully fledged out or something. So it's a really great journal. Um, I'll put that link in the chat. Um, yeah, but also if you wanna create a blog post, infographic, sample, social media post, uh, video clip, music, art, or project on a drawdown strategy, uh, this would be really cool because you know you might see some strategies that you've never even heard of before on ways to combat climate change. Uh, so if so, you can email us your work uh, at contests at cleanearthforkids.org. Uh, and this can also contribute to community service hours. Uh, so yeah, now is, uh, here's Judith to talk more about contests and challenges. Okay. Uh, thank you, John Williams. Um, so we have many contests and challenges. And if you go to our contest page at cleanearthforkids.org, um, you'll see a variety of contests like art, music, um, writing, poetry, um, infographics, and many more. Um, we also have a contest for yeah poetry. So yeah, um, so you can check out cleanitforkids.org and our YouTube channel for more information and videos. Um, um, I like to talk about uh, our today's con calendar contest. So it's a contest. Um, it is a way to show um, your art music, videos, um, research reports, and many more, uh, just so you can teach us um, about what important things happened on that day. And yeah, we are excited to hear from you. So here's Anna to talk about these are the hands contest. Yes, thank you, Judith. Um, so the these are the hands contest is open to everyone of all ages. We hope you will join us in making a drawing and decorating a hand to recognize, honor, and lift up people working for change and to make life better for others. Everyone is encouraged to participate and honor someone making a positive difference in your school, community, state, or city, state, or in our world. You can draw and decorate a picture of a hand and add symbols, words, and pictures to honor their work. 
And next, I believe um, Jonah may have something to talk about SDA. Of course, I just, um, first off, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who made this panel possible today. I know I wasn't able to hop on until the very end, but um, Students Demand Action is such a inspiring cause. And it's one that I've had the, the pleasure to work with in the past. Um, in high school, I joined Students Demand Action in response to um, the Parkland shooting that occurred during that same year. And um, that was an experience that um, left a, a profound impact upon me being you know, a member of that, uh, uh, being a high schooler at the time. And I, you know, as a part of that group, I, uh, I participated in the national school walkout. I don't know if you guys remember that happening, um, but I, you know, I went and stood out in, uh, I, I, you know, I, I was able to drive at that time. I drove to the center of my hometown and you know, with a group of about a, 150 other kids. And we also had a, a walkout that occurred on school campus that um, about 3000 kids went to. That's like over half of our, of our large California public high school. Um, and I'm so grateful for uh, the fact that even though, you know, I've graduated high school since then. And um, though I uh, haven't been active in Students Demand Action in, in the last year or so, I'm so grateful for the people who have continued to fight that um, fight that fight because um, as so sadly we've seen in the news recently, it's still a fight that uh, is very prevalent in this country and one that I'm so inspired by everyone who is continues to uh, continues to fight that battle. And I, I uh, will, I, it's, you know, even just being reminded of it, I hadn't been reminded of students demand action in about a year until I, until I heard about this panel that was happening today. So it's inspired me already to um, get reinvolved and I'm, I'm just so grateful. So thank you everyone. Thanks Jonah. Thanks so much. Um, and we appreciate, we know you, I see you guys are working, you're studying, doing all, you know, really important things out there, activities, family stuff, and yet you make time uh, to be here and to um, give your best. And we really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. You're so amazing. Uh, Yusuf, um, would you like to share uh, your thoughts about today's panel? And then, and also if you'd like to speak about students demand action or um, equity, uh, racial justice, social justice, environmental justice. Yes, thank you so much. <clears throat> I'm Youssef Miller with Clean Earth for Kids and North County Equity and Justice Coalition. And every time I come on to one of these uh, presentations, I'm blown away by our youth. Uh, I've learned so much about uh, Perclare Foss and, and POs and KOs and all kinds of O's. And I'm, I'm 52 years old and these uh, students, uh, teenagers in early 20s are teaching me about all kinds of things that I need to be aware of. It sort of frightens me, but activates me to do something to get these petitions signed, to get our, our elected officials on this. And I invite them all to just listen to our youth as they explain all these things to us and get us all engaged and caught up. So uh, this is something that affects all of us in a huge environment all over San Diego, all over the world, everywhere we go. But particularly with people of color, we have a micro environment that affects us even more when it, when it comes to the intensity of people of black and brown uh, persuasion and our indigenous brothers and sisters. In these micro communities, we have a higher concentration of these toxins. People are not regulating these, these poisons and these toxins as they're put into our grasses and around our, our families and our, our streams and rivers, if we have them. If we have them, they're polluted. And, and this is a, a systemic system that's been going on without regulation, even though we have low regulation quality. That quality is even less in people of color. And this, this uh, Clean Earth for Kids, Suzanne and everyone involved here keeps that in the forefront of what we're doing. That our, our, our people of color who are affected by these, these processes, our animal neighbors who are affected by these processes, our plant neighbors who are affected by these processes are all part of this movement. And we keep that on the forefront. 
So I thank everyone for what they do here and keeping the clarity of goals. Their goals are very clear, whether it's here in California, whether it's in Pennsylvania, my home state, where, where we, uh, we're trying to make changes there, in DC, where people are making the changes, in Sacramento, where we have people making the changes, and here in our local area with our city council members and our board of, of, of supervisors. So it's just amazing to me the reach that these uh, kids have. Um, Clean Earth for Kids are my champions, they're my heroes, and I'm sure when I'm sitting back in my rocking chair, they're gonna be the people looking out for me as I'm, I'm sitting back with a uh, blowing bubbles in a little uh, blowing bubble pipe there. So um, I, I appreciate everyone who's here and looking out for the little guy, the one that has no voice, because those are the people who are most vulnerable to these legislations. I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being a cheerleader for us uh, everywhere, all the time, all day long, all night long, and all that you do with uh, attending so many, um, not just of our meetings, but meetings everywhere. We're excited about NAACP Environmental uh, Commission, or uh, yes, committee. Gosh, we're on so many, right? NAACP Environ Climate and Environmental uh, Justice Committee, um, which you're now the chair. Uh, so we're so excited at Clearance for Kids yes. and so proud, um, you know, of, of you and all you're doing in all spaces, mosques against trafficking. Um, you know, we, we hear you speak uh, all over uh, to all kinds of communities. And uh, we just we just feel it's such a blessing uh, to have you in our lives. So thank you so yes. much for being here. And so thanks, guys. Go ahead. I am so uh, honored to represent the North County uh, chapter of the NAACP as the um, Environmental Justice Committee Chair. So we work closely with Clean, Clean Earth for Kids and a lot of people who are on this call now here in, in throughout San Diego. So thank you for, for having me here. And those other issues that you brought up, whether it's human trafficking, they affect our kids and their environment, whether it's uh, poverty affects our kids and their environment, and whether it's homelessness, it affects our kids and their environment. So we're all tied in to this, this efforts that is put on by Clean Earth for Kids. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. So I'll be staying on um, the panel discussion. I know these guys, they've, you know, they're working, they've got all of these things going on. So feel free to hop off, have some dinner. Jonah was probably running in, needs to have have a, have something to eat, uh, all of that. So, and I know, um, you know, it's late for getting late for, for you, John, over there um, in the East Coast right now. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for being here. Um, I'll be on the call um, and uh, you guys are welcome to hop off. Um, we'll promote people to panelists and say thank you uh, to, to our supporters here. And again, thank you for all that you do and for all of you guys. And I'll cut this out when we have the, um, or have Darren, film Darren or someone much better with editing than I am, cut this part out. But I just wanted to say, um, so Friday, tomorrow, just a real quick thing. So Friday, tomorrow, uh, John Williams and others, if you guys are available at, uh, well, that's 6 p.m. your time on the East Coast, 3 p.m. our time, we're gonna meet with Joe Howd. And I mentioned this now because, Yusuf, um, this is really uh, per pertaining to uh, actions that we can be taking with NAACP and just supporting uh, green hydrogen. And so the way of the future, it only emits uh, water vapor and it's run and powered by, uh, it's powered by the sun and the wind, you know, renewable energy. And uh, it's really the way of the future, but the fossil fuel industry trying to fool people because there's blue hydrogen that's natural gas, right? We don't want those pipelines. There's black hydrogen that is coal, black coal, brown hydrogen that's brown coal. And all of us know how hard that we're working uh, to stop coal. I mean, due to this art and, and we've talked about stopping coal, stopping that mercury and all of that. So it's really important that we're very educated about green hydrogen. And when we hear, um, you know, uh, people pushing for hydrogen, you have to ask, is it green hydrogen, right? So <clears throat> we're going to be having a presentation the last Thursday of the month, but it's called Superpower. And um, our host is going to be Joe Howd of many of, you know, North County Climate Change Alliance and uh, Sierra Club and lots of places, um, along with our youth that are pictured here today. 
So digging in deep to what are the strategies, right? And how are we going to get there? So you're going to be so blown away and impressed by uh, the youth and, um, of course, you know, Joe Howd and, and others. Um, we may in, even invite Michael Mann, who is, you know, well-known author, and um, Mark Z. Jacobson. If you do not follow Mark Z. Jacobson on Twitter, please do. Please follow Michael Mann. Please follow these people and get on Twitter. We are on Twitter because Mike Levin, our congressman, <laughs> asked me why we were not on Twitter. And I thought that was like uh, March 2019. And I said, I will get us on uh, Twitter. I will get us on Twitter now. So, yes, that's how you contact these people that are decision makers. So we all need to be on Twitter. So and you can go to Cleary for Kids, see who we're following, and follow those people as well. Those are the change makers. So thanks again, guys. And um, hopefully people want to hop on tomorrow at 3 p.m. our time and 6 p.m. East Coast time. We're going to you know, start digging in deep to green hydrogen and what it looks like. Um, it's, it's all wrapped up in the economy and how we really can make change to adjust um a future for all of us so thanks again guys and thank you so much miss debbie and everybody uh, i'll be on here uh, but i know you guys will probably hop off and i'm also available this weekend all right see you guys soon thank you so much